Happy National Read a Book Day on the Matt Sager Podcast. That's right, it is officially a national holiday in honor of reading books. Nobody tell the president. He will freak out. Nothing wrong with books. Books are wonderful. Books are among the best things we have in this world. No frigate like a book, as they say. A book is a place you can go to read what a frigate is, for example. Many of your favorite cinematic properties, television properties, were at one time or another a book. The Expanse, the fantastic television show that was canceled and then I think has been picked up by another network. I hope it has. It's such a beloved kind of sleeper cult show with such a hardcore fan base that if it hasn't yet been picked up, I'm pretty confident it will be. But to my point, that began as a series of books, as did Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, Game of Thrones, even James Bond. Books are a wonderful, precious thing, whether they're digital on your Kindle or a big old Library of America hardcover like what I've been reading today. Rereading the great Ross MacDonald's Lou Archer mysteries, a couple from the 1950s. I was rereading The Way Some People Die, The Galton Case, The Doomsters, and The Barbarous Coast. The Library of America put them all together in one nifty little hardcover. And while, as a New Yorker, with space at a premium, I am a big fan of the Kindle and of digital books. I also have a real appreciation for the feel of a nice old hardcover in my hands. That's right, I am literate. Try to contain your shock. Stephen King's It? Obviously that began life as a book. We all float down here, Georgie. Any movie you've ever seen that has anything to do with Stephen King started out as a book. He is a writer, first and foremost. He's such a good writer, I would argue that even at this stage, he's still underrated. Stephen King is a guy who's mastered the craft of writing so well that 60% of his protagonists are writers from Maine who've been in car accidents, and we don't care, because he writes so well that it's fine if he's basically the protagonist of a third of his stories. And his family appears in many of his stories as well, thinly veiled. But it's basically, you know, you write what you know. That's actually a very wise thing to do. And when you're good enough, you don't even have to pretend. You can just say, hey, this guy's a horror writer from Bangor, Maine, who was hit by a van. No relation. And I'll buy it. And love it. I have a deep abiding affection for just about everything Stephen King's ever written. Under his own name, as Richard Bachman, whatever. If King wrote it, nine times out of ten, I love it. Anytime he puts pen to paper, it's pretty much a guaranteed masterpiece. In fact, I recently read The Outsider, one of his more recent books, and it's awesome. Not only is it a great Stephen King horror book, but it features characters from the wonderful trilogy that started with Mr. Mercedes, which, that too, is a television property now. It's hard as hell to watch. If you know how I can watch Mr. Mercedes, please let me know, because it's got this wonderful cast and it's this wonderful story, but it's on the Audience Network, which is owned by AT&T, and what even is that? I've tried really hard. Put out feelers. AT&T is my phone provider. And yet they have not been able to communicate to me how I can watch Mr. Mercedes. It's a shame. Something I was really excited for. When the series premiered, they posted the first two episodes online and I was hooked. And then very soon thereafter went into withdrawal. Because I don't know how to find the darn thing. But I hope you've been having a splendid week. This is a very abbreviated episode of the Matt Sager podcast tonight. In which I just really wanted to celebrate literacy, catch up with you, and just check in. I've got quite a bit of audio editing to do. As I've mentioned, I recorded a terrific interview with singer-songwriter Patty Rothberg the other day, and I want to air it, but we're really good, really old friends, and we haven't talked for a while. So it was one of these things where it was an interview, and then also, oh gosh, how's so-and-so's sister? How's so-and-so's cousin? And I don't know how much of that you really want or need or care to hear, so I'm just going to give you the juicy stuff. That will be coming very soon. And I'm interested in having other guests as well. If you'd like to be one of them, be you a comic, musician like Patty, fellow podcaster, I'm very interested in the whole concept of cross-promotion. Similarly, I'd be interested in having you as a potential cast member. I do the show every day, so I wouldn't necessarily expect that of you, but if you're a comedy writer looking for some exposure, a voice actor who'd like to participate... I'm tempted to say newsreader, but I don't know how many of those there are, and I guess it's kind of a dangerous profession nowadays. Yeah, uh, speaking of National Book Day, by the way, oh boy, I've been hearing things about this Woodward character. Apparently, he's quite the investigative reporter, 
but he can get our president's Irish up, so to speak. The president is not apparently in a good mood. I know a little bit about what that's like. Granted, he wasn't president and he was a bit younger and more mellow, but I have been yelled at by our president. People have asked me, what's your beef with Trump, libtard? And first of all, I'm not a libtard. I'm quite liberal, and I may have any number of intellectual failings. But my entire episode last night was about the fact that I've lived in New York since birth, which was 1972. It's safe to say I've had multiple encounters with Trump long before he had political aspirations that he was pursuing, and most of them involved him yelling at me. He came up to me at a party where I was watching David Bowie perform and doing something with a country musician who's sort of known for doing this thing that's quite fun and quite harmless, and let's just say the president harshed my mellow. But getting back to the show, if you'd like to be a part of it, contact me. Email matt at mattsager.com. Call me, 646-535-4788. You can also ask me questions for my fun What's in My Box segment. And hit me up on social media while you're at it. Twitter is at Matt Sager. Instagram's Real Matt Sager. Facebook, The Matt Sager, and the voiceover page is Matt Sager VO. This podcast page is Matt Sager Podcast. And for more of those social links, blog posts, articles, my contact info, voiceover reels, and more, head on over to MattSagerVoiceOver.com.